So what's your question? All right, I've listened to your talks, and you've always talked, you always, like, really stressed the fact of not, like, believing that the devil's under every rock, and I agree with you with that. But um, what would you say, can you speak on, like, the fear that comes from, like, the feeling of a demonic presence or anything like that? Absolutely. Yeah. That's a very good question, um, very relevant today. Um, I personally went through this. Uh, you have to have balance, but we get the balance from the church. Um, uh, neither be cynical nor credulous. Uh, anyone who doesn't believe in the existence and activity of Satan and the fallen angels is a heretic, in plain English. You know, I talk that way sometimes, forgive me. <laughs> but but that's, that's the way it is. Well, it'd be easier to forgive you if you were sorry, but I know you're well, not you sorry. Know, no, but <laughs> you it's, mean it, it. It's, it, it, that's a doctrine of the faith. The existence and activity of Satan and the fallen angels. The Holy uh, Pope John Paul II's uh, uh, catechesis on the book of Genesis uh, was, was excellent concerning that. I've had personal experiences. Um, the first three years after my conversion, it was a daily battle, both ordinary and extraordinary. And I could tell you stories all night long, but we don't have time. How do you deal with that? Well, I'll be honest with you. For about two years, I slept with the light on, with a holy water bottle in one hand and a rosary in the other. That's how scared I was. St. Michael the Archangel and Padre Pio were my two main protectors. Um, and once again, in, from a place of tremendous fear, almost terror, Jesus, I trust in you. Hail Mary. Hail Mary. These things become like weapons. Uh, they crash down on the devil's head and they scare him half to death. Like St. Teresa of Avila used to say, um, the devil would appear over her in a horrible uh, uh, kind of a specter, and she'd look at him and say, oh, it's only you, and turn over and go back to sleep. And she said, why should we be, we be afraid of the devil? He's afraid of one drop of holy water. And so reality, you know, that's reality. Uh, we're children of God. Is it real? Yes. The fallen angels have preternatural characteristics. They can project terror in front of them. Sometimes you can be so terrified, and it's not a psychological thing. That's something that's coming at you from, how do you deal with it? <laughs> Jesus, I trust you. The holy name of Jesus. You may be too traumatized to say anything else. Just say, Jesus. Jesus. Tremendous power in the name of Jesus. I, I've known people who were involved in witchcraft, the occult, and satanic worship. Yeah. And at a certain point, they, well, they usually think that they're in charge. And then they realize that the tables are turned and the enemy of our soul is in charge. And that's when they become utterly terrified. And oftentimes, it was the only thing they could say was the holy name of Jesus. Yeah. And they would call on Jesus our Lord. And just saying his name, because they don't know what else to say. They haven't prayed in so long. And I can't think of a single word more powerful. Yeah. God who saves. It's what, it's what the name means. God saves. Yeah. Pure power.